Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Please subscribe to my channel by clicking on the red subscribe button. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will share my adventure in shooting Jason Lane black grass uh, dry plate. Although I have been shooting wet plate photography, uh, dry plate is totally new to me. And moreover, this is an experimental product. This is on black grass, so you are supposed to get a wet plate uh, positive kind of effect. Not exactly the same, but the idea is to get a positive on the black grass. So this is not a final product yet. Uh, Jason Lane and his team is still trying to improve the product. So I will put the link to his website. Uh, if you are interested, you can check out his website. Uh, you, you will be able to purchase his uh, dry plates and other products. And from time to time, he will release uh, this black glass uh, dry plate for purchase. So you can check out his uh, website. Uh, the other uh, place that you can check out is this uh, dry plate photography Facebook group. So for that Facebook group, there is a lot of discussion going on about uh, dry plate photography. Not only on Jason Lane uh, dry plate products, but there are also other photographers who are making their own silver jointing emulsion, coating them on uh, glass. Do come along with me as I try to shoot a few of this plate and uh, hopefully we'll get some good result. If not, we'll learn from there. So let's go. What I have here is a box of uh, J Lane dry plate and blow taps and this is 4x5 size and rated as ISO 25 for those who are not familiar with dry plate dry plate is the photography media where a piece of glass is coated with a layer of um, gelatin emulsion uh, usually it is um, mixed with uh, silver bromomide and this dry plate photography came out after wet plate and I think by nine, by 1880s it has uh, replaced uh, wet plate photography. You need not develop the plate um, on the shooting side. You, you can expose the plate first and then develop it at a later time compared to wet plate. So there's a lot of uh, convenience and uh, it was widely accepted by the photographers then in the 1880s interesting thing about this box is that this is on a black glass plate if we do it correctly we should get a positive image against the black glass uh, but do note that this is still a experimental um, product uh, by J Lane dry plate right so let's take a look at the back of this uh, box for some instructions uh, just want to highlight a few things this is the actual plate size 100 mm by 126 by 1.5 mm so it's a 1.5 mm thick black glass the so effective speed varies with time of year and time of day right so i think this is to do with the uv level that is present at that moment so if you visit the website at um pictorialgraphica.com you will have more information right so to process this as an embryo type right is they suggest that we use their famous format number one mono buff to develop so again if you're not familiar with mono buff what it means that the developer and fixer is in one single uh, buff so you combine both the development stage and the fixing stage into one set of chemical right it doesn't mean that all mono bulb will work you need certain kind of uh, i think ammonium inside that chemical uh, for it to work otherwise you may end up getting a negative instead of a positive right so there's some instruction here uh, what happened here is that currently there is a uh, no stock available for this uh, famous format number one mono bulb. So what Jason Lin has uh, kindly uh, replaced for us is the Lee number no. 2 developer. So this will be suitable for processing the dry plates and types. Okay, and this is in powder form to mix one liter. So what are the chemicals inside this uh, monobuff? The usual um, ingredients for a developer, menthol, sodium sulfate, hydroquinone, sodium carbonate, potassium bromide 
and ammonium bicyanate. The ingredient listed here are for the developer and then uh, ammonium dicyanate is uh, more for the fixing part. Right? Okay. So as usual with, with caution. Right? So I'm going to mix this up first. Alright, so, so I prepare the hot water at 60 degrees Celsius, about 600 ml of it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pour in back A, this back A, now let's pour it in. It come in the sealed plastic bag that's resealable. I think this kind of packaging is quite popular this day. Okay. Let's pour it in. You can't see, but I'm wearing a mask right now. Uh, when mixing powder chemical, I prefer to wear a mask. Okay. So pour everything in and start to stir it and check that it has fully dissolved before you pour in the next bag, bag B. Uh, it seems to dissolve quite fast. I'm just checking to make sure that uh, it's all dissolved. It seems to go away quite fast. So what I'm going to do is to pour in bag B. Bag B is quite a lot of stuff, quite heavy. And then some of them has already turned brown. Not sure, sure what is that, but that shouldn't be a problem. A lot of stuff. And you see, and you can see that the developer has turned color to a kind of brownish solution. Okay, this might take a while to dissolve everything. One eternity later. Okay, I think it has more or less dissolved for back B, so I'm going to pour in back C. Pour in back C. Okay, this may smell a bit because of the ammonium. I'm just taking a guess, right? Because it's, all these are not labeled. So I'm going to pour everything in. But I think that should be fine. And I'll start to mix again. I'm not putting my nose too near to the solution. Um, because there's ammonium in the ingredients. Huh? So there will be ammonium smell. So don't put your nose too near. And uh, mix this in a place with good ventilation. Okay, And then I think what we need to do. Uh, is to top up with cold water or at least room temperature water up to one liter and this is what I have here top up to one liter and before we use the solution we need to cool it down to 20 degrees Okay, so today I have also bought up my Pentex uh, spot meter. So this is a very old star spot meter. The dry plate is supposed to be rated at um, ISO 25. Um, different time of the year, you may have to rate it differently. But I think in Singapore, the UV level is quite high, so I will rate it at 25. Alright, so I have set the aperture. I'm sure you can see. Aperture is at f16 and shutter speed at 1 over 4. So let's take the snack shot.
the processing will be quite long, about 20 minutes. So I'm going to use my Patterson Orbital Color Print Processor. I think uh, in my previous video, I have uh, talked about this one, which is a very good, uh, very versatile processor. It will allow me to process up to uh, 4x5 uh, sheets. But I'm going to process uh, one plate at one time because this is my very first time doing this experimental plate. I just want to see what happens when I first plate and is there any need to calibrate the process or to change my process after I see the result of the first plate. Okay, so let me load my plate and then I'll cool down the chemical to 20 degrees and then we can start our processing. So the plate has been loaded into this processor. I think it's somewhere in this corner, on the left corner. And I prepare some ice water. And I will use my stainless steel uh, tank to put it inside this uh, ice water to bring the developer quickly to 20 degrees. Right? Because the stainless steel will conduct heat very well. So I think we should be able to get 20 degrees in a few minutes or so. I have bring it down to 19. Going to be in 18 very soon. So I thought instead of starting at 20, I will start at 18. And in 20 minutes, um, it may go up a few degrees in the processing tank itself. The ambient temperature now is about 28 or so. So I'm just going to compensate for the increase in temperature by starting at a lower temperature. So now it's about 18 now. So I'm ready to pour in the developer and going to start the timer for 20 minutes. And I will do my agitation. in some water to rinse it okay the quarter side is on the other side eh? so let me flip it over to see is there any image at all oh dear okay there is some image but it has mostly peeled off So for my second plate, I have much better result. So what I did was to change to tray development and this is the setup. Is uh, I have a tray where I put in my plate right? and in a, another bigger tray, I put some ice water and the developer, I cool it down to about 15 instead of the usual 20 and with the safe light on, I can developed by inspection visually i can see when is a good time to stop and then um what i found is it took about three minutes for the image to come out and i stopped the development at seven minutes instead of the 20 minutes that was stated in the back of the uh, lee number two developer uh, box huh? Okay, uh, I'm now in my makeshift um, dark room. So just a quick uh, run through of my setup. So this is the mono bath. I'm soaking it in uh, in the another container of ice just to cool it down to maybe 15 degrees Celsius. Okay, and uh, I will develop my plate in this tray. And in this bigger tray, I will put some ice just to keep the temperature down. Okay. Okay, the developer is now at about 15 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to start my development. Usually do, I put the plate on the upper side and tilt the tray 
and then I pour in my developer 100 ml of it and then I will quickly tilt it back and then flood the plate with the developer and at the same time I'm going to start the timer just to keep track of uh, how long has it lapsed so and visually we can see the reaction on the plate I'm not sure you can see but this is after about 7 minutes of development um, the image is already out the shadow details the mid tone is there ok but I may let it sit for one more so that it get fixed longer alright now I'm washing the plate we are supposed to wash the plate for about 10 minutes and if you see any um, deposit on the surface you can use a piece of cotton wet it and then wipe it uh, softly carefully not too hard uh, that will help to clear the surface of some of the collodion uh, silver that is on the surface right and that will improve the contrast otherwise it will be like a layer of view over the the photo itself right similar to wet plate where sometimes we see some deposit on the surface and we will wipe it off and I think for now this plate is the best out of the four plates that I have shot so far Hi guys, welcome to the end of this video. I hope you enjoy the process of seeing how I shoot and process the dry plate. Um, of course, there are some hiccups here and there. As I mentioned, I am new to dry plate photography and also that this product is uh, still an experimental product. Uh, but I'm happy that I managed to get a, a proper plate. Not perfect, but I loved it. Um, on my fourth uh, plate, I find that metering it at ISO 12 seems to work better for me but again, I'm in Singapore so the UV light level may be different from uh, where you are so there are some technical tips on Jason Lane website you can check it out and uh, give it a read to find out more about the exposure and the uh, metering techniques I do have a few uh, plates left so I may uh, use them for other experiment if I do that, I will make sure I make a video about it so if you have any comments about the shooting, the processing, uh, please leave it in the comment section below and I'll be happy to hear from you. So i see you in my next video. Thank you. Bye. Hi guys, we have come to the end of this video. Please like it, share it and finally do subscribe to my channel and i see you in my next video. Take care. Bye.